Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Better at Beach podcast. You are about to get a full-on lesson in nutrition, supplements, and hydration for athletes, and specifically volleyball players. Now, I have with me Sarah Putt, who is one of our camp coaches. Uh, she's one of those athletes that's also got a brain, which is awesome, and a personality. And she's going to share a bunch of her client and athlete wins and her personal story about how she was able to turn her performance around with nutrition fixes, with hydration fixes, and some of the best supplements that you can use. Now, we're not going to dive fully into the details of the supplement world. What we are trying to give you and, and the goal, the problem that I've seen is that in the nutrition world, there is too much micro information. And when you have all of this information from everywhere uh, telling you the opposites of what one piece of food can do, you end up listening to a reel or a podcast going, okay, with that information, what do I actually do? And so our goal for this and for the continuing masterclass that we're building with Sarah Putt, we're going to give you actionable things. We're going to give you actual meals that you can go and get. We're going to give you a little bit of a shopping list so that you know before a practice, before a tournament, not a guess, not let me read all these labels and get this percentage of X and this percentage of whatever, but we're going to give you the actual foods um, that you can buy and the actual drinks that you can buy so that you have answers, easy answers. And I think in terms of nutrition, that's what we're all looking for. We're all hoping that somebody can just like <laughs> nutrition joke, spoon feed us, uh, whatever we need. So, uh, if you want to be a part of this and if you want to join a live Q and a Sarah is going to be part one of our master coaches. So that means that our complete player program on better at our online athletes and students, they're going to be able to ask live questions of Sarah about nutrition, hydration, just like we do at our camps. So if you want to join that, just click on the link around this video. We'll include 36 of our best beach volleyball drills, three free vertical jump workouts. We're also going to give you some discounts on classes and camps, and I will send you tons of great volleyball videos, advice, uh, deals, and news and early bird specials on our upcoming camps and events. So click on the video, click on the link around this video, make sure that you... Um, join in because Sarah's going to be able to coach you live in nutrition and hydration and supplements. So if you're one of those who's kind of like me, who's kind of like the whole world that is looking at the nutrition world and being like, yeah, there's a lot of information out there, but there's not a lot of answers. We're here to give you those answers. So I hope you enjoy this live edition. I hope you're enjoying the podcast if you're listening. And uh, I hope you sign up so that you can dive a little bit deeper and get real actionable advice uh, with tournament nutrition checklists and shopping lists that we can give you from her masterclass. Without further ado, Sarah, hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks so much for having me. Um, I'm going to start off with a bit of gratitude again, and just thank you for all the opportunities that you've created for beach volleyball players, whether it's like lower divisions, just playing or um, pro players getting to come coach and stuff. So um, I remember back in the volley house days, volley house Hermosa, you've uh, been you've been creating opportunities for so long for people. So appreciate <laughs> all you do, Mark. Thanks, <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, it's been you know you look back on it and you're like, what did I want? What did I really need? What would have made my life easier? And I think the more I talk about kind of entrepreneurial or business owner type stuff. You just have a bunch of little scars and old desires that you had. And you're like, why wasn't that easier for me to find? Because I would have been light years ahead of where I am right now had I had this. Yes. And I think we're doing that for players and for athletes. Like now adults have a place to go, uh, like our YouTube channel and our Instagram, the amount that that stuff shared just in terms of learning setting rules. <laughs> which is crazy that that's our number one blog post is is setting rules. We get like 2,000 visitors a month uh, just to that one blog. But it was, yeah, early on, it was just, you know, I, I, I didn't, it wasn't easy for an adult. Me, I was like 26 years old in California and I couldn't find a coach. I, I literally couldn't find a coach and I didn't even know that you should be coached. 
I was just like, okay, I'm at this level. I'm out of college. So there's no more coaching left for me. I just go it on my own. And then all of a sudden you see like the top AVP teams and they all have coaches, you know, USA teams, they've all got coaches sitting in their box. You know, what's, what's the difference, but they're hard to find because there's like six of them at that level. So yeah. we wanted to create something that, that can at least give that great information to way more people. Um, and so they can get it faster. And so I, I think we've hit that mission and now it's just continuing to do it. And then we put everything that we have online and now it's time to really dive into minds like yours where we can open up a whole level of specificity uh to bring to athletes and so i'm I'm excited about this one i'm excited about the course that we're building uh for the online library and i know that you played ncaa i know that um lots of time on the qualifier lots of time on heavy florida tournaments big thick florida tournaments where the humidity just can crush or annihilate people and i've seen people in full body cramps getting ivs right yeah. on the sides of courts so yeah. i want to talk a lot about that and how people can prevent cramping how people can fuel better and what like the misconceptions are so let's let's start giving some people some easy stuff and i and i want to know why you chose nutrition is there a backstory did something go wrong why is this your path now i love it yeah um i've been blessed to do nutrition because i'm so passionate about it um beach volleyball is such a physically demanding sport um as far as like other in comparison with other sports and nutrition can really set players apart um and i also just love like eating can be one stressful and like guilt inducing and confusing mm -hmm. Um, trying to figure out what to eat um, and trying to just navigate all that can be hard. So I, it's so rewarding, like getting to help people have like peace of mind, clear goals um, and like really prioritize what's going to actually help make them better. Right. Um, so I forgot your question already. <laughs> <laughs> all good. Um, could I ask you to sit up so that our video content later on is a little bit better or just adjust that? I know it's, yeah, it's not I'm working on posture. you're trying to relax after practices and getting all sweaty but <laughs> um so I want to know why you started nutrition and if there's a backstory or something bad that happened that you wanted to turn around or just a problem that you felt and now that's why that you're in this in this path yes um, the short story is my first women's partner who is an absolute like awesome kick butt nutrition like health coach sam uh and just like energy machine uh she's the one that told me i was good enough to play in college when i was in high school and i was like i thought i was i was like i can't play in college and she's like you can play in college you can blah, blah, blah. and she's a health coach and like she uh opened my mind up to the world of nutrition um but also like i didn't really eat great um, I was kind of like a work smart, not hard player in high school. So um, I had to learn a lot. Like I, I didn't naturally um, cook too like much and stuff. So I've had to come from the place of like learning and figuring it out. Um, and still like I keep everything really simple. Um, but yeah, once I think I, I just learned about I remember my mind getting like exploded. I watched a documentary about how bad we eat in America. And I was like, okay, this seems like a good job security <laughs> direction. <laughs> so, um, yeah. That is pretty good job security, right? When you know that food companies are not designed to make you healthy, they're designed to make money. And yeah. their job is to like, one of their marketing tactics is to tell you how healthy something might be and just the i remember uh, in my nutrition classes like the differences that or the requirements for something to be labeled organic for something to be labeled natural uh was just absolutely ridiculous and the fact that the marketing companies they all they all bid onto it like nature valley you know it, nature valley has the word natural which you think is going to be healthy but they might be just be injecting tons of chemicals into there and it's like ah, now we have to now we have to battle against marketers to get people healthy. And marketers are smart with their words, so it's not an easy job. 
It's true. You definitely have to like fight against the current to eat good today. And mm. it's usually more expensive to eat better. Um, or it in takes the short run. Time. Yeah. Uh, so, but the encouraging thing is, is that people are becoming like more and more interested in taking their health into their own hands. Like it's not a secret anymore. So mm. it is cool. Like there's that desire. Um, and I love working with people that just want to get better in any way. Like what I don't like is talking to people who just don't care. And I'm like, All right, I'm not going to convince you to care, but if you already care, like let's, let's get to work. So. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny that it's, it's, it's so much more expensive in the short run, but then if you go and you, you think about your doctor's visits and you think about the future of, you know, awful things like a cancer and, um, self-induced disease, you know, mm -hmm. chronic disease that you caused. People get labeled with these diseases and like, oh, well, I have a disease. No, you don't have a disease. You built it over years of terrible decisions that you had the, the chance to fix. So, you know, there are those, of course, people who, you know, have the short end of the stick. And then people, I was listening to a podcast last night about, okay, genetically, if you're different, you could make the same choices as somebody else and have a completely different outcome. But understanding that and understanding that there are good choices and bad choices and that a disease it can be an option, you know, yeah. and you need to control what you're putting in your body in order to fix that. So, yeah, it's worthy investment for sure. <laughs> yes, we're going through a whole um, Janelle's got genetic expression that she's susceptible to a lot with okay. her health. So when we talk about mold, like right now we're getting a mold remediation in our house and mold testing and I'm not affected by it in the same environment that we're living in. I don't really get anything like every now and then I might get a sniffle and she gets blasted with allergies and she ranks either a four or a five on the reaction to mold scale for like allergy testing. Um... And had I never lived with this person, I would have been like, yeah, it's mold. Like, what are you talking about? But then you see her health just go, boom, get blasted for a full week after something that I'm living in and has zero effect in me. And yeah. you're like, oh, man. And if you don't experience different people, you don't hear a lot of stories. You, you don't realize that there are completely different experiences in the world. And so uh, my experience with her has, has been this health journey and understanding how one type of food can treat people completely differently. And we don't want to get too far into that because there is that 80% rule, right? Um, where 80% of the people are going to get great results from the information that we give here. So yeah, uh, just know though, there is not a one size fits all. There's a one size fits most. And yeah. if you guys are those outliers, then I think you'll feel it and you'll start understanding. But if you feel like your health is always up and down, start doing some homework, really start investing in, in some podcasts, then you can take control of your health. But this isn't a health, health, health podcast, right? We're talking nutrition for athletes. So what do you think if you were to, to ride on one piece of advice that you had to give and you, it had to affect the absolute most people without you knowing them, without you knowing their problems, but it's all these volleyball players. What would you tell them knowing the most common mistakes that, that the most people make? I mean, if I was talking like to general athlete population, uh, a quote I say a lot, which is not groundbreaking is that you can't out train a bad diet and poor sleep. Um, so a lot of times as athletes, like, especially grown adults, like have a full-time job and then play like three hours of pickup every night and then a tournament every weekend, <laughs> just like overload their schedule with workout, workout, like weekend warriors, um, and expecting to perform like an athlete, but then not taking the time, um, to do the boring things that aren't as glamorous, which is like recovery and sleep and hydration and nutrition. Um, so you can't out train it. You can't out. Oh, if I just play an extra night or train harder, it's like, no, you need to kind of take care of that. Um, outside of the court stuff. Um, yeah. You're putting mud but, into your gas tank, hoping your car is going to run. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I like that. I might steal that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Um, nutrition wise though, the, the more that you can just eat whole foods, the better. Um, what does whole foods mean? Foods that have not in their original state. So without tons of processing and extra ingredients and stuff, which is common sense. Um, a lot of things I say are not going to be groundbreaking, but it's like, okay, how much are you actually doing that? Um, and I'm really big on building routines and habits and like taking away decision fatigue about nutrition um, uh, and and making it nice and simple because a lot of times the main questions I get about nutrition is supplements or like tournament day, which is like such a small percent of what is actually causing your results. Um, so have you heard of the big rock theory? No, uh, maybe. I'm sure you or like the Pareto principle. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So like focus on the thing that's going to make the biggest difference rather than like the tiny things that are only going to make a tiny difference. And most of the time you're not sleeping enough, not hydrating enough, not eating enough protein. Those three things alone, like once we get those under control, then we can um, talk about some other stuff. Yeah. And it's funny, right? You're like, well, what do I eat on tournament day? He goes, that's one day a week. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you expect coke for breakfast, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can't be living the fuds life for the rest of the time and just be like in- ingesting Fireball and Lucky Charms. To- <laughs> it's funny, like people, that's there's like a a uh, lot of beach volleyball players that just eat and drink whatever they want, but um, and still sometimes win tournaments. Okay, I'm not taking that away, but then it's just not sustainable, right? Mm. Yeah, can't live the FUDS lifestyle. Fever, and they talk about how many fruity pebbles that he like had, and that he would just ingest boxes of it. And it's like, okay, uh, but you're not lasting until you're 40. It's you know? true. It's true. I think I saw this is a sidebar. Uh, Richard Sherman, uh, yeah. he would do like a shot of Henny before every game, oh at least God. one, maybe two. And he'd like have it in his backpack and that's a that's a different experience but again that's on the weekend so yeah there are people that are you know smoking weed before games and you're just like okay again not sustainable and then um now that marijuana is like legal use in a lot of places they're able to run a lot more studies on it and they are realizing the brain frying um that is actually happening in people's thinking capacity and memory capacity uh yeah. is decreasing especially with you know alcohol and and thc and then you get those uh there are different things that cannabinoids can definitely help with um but yeah <laughs> not going down that rabbit hole today should be a fun interesting conversation for later yeah but <laughs> if you were to set out a weekly schedule for some so let's we'll get to the tournament day nutrition in a little bit uh but you said building a routine was the most important thing. And, and how do we control the other six days? So what's what's a cookie cutter routine that somebody can just subscribe to? I mean, we talked about my breakfast off camera and how like my breakfast is the same every day and it takes me 90 seconds, you know, <laughs> versus a 45 minute wake up. But what's a good routine that, that you have and that you can establish for tackling the 80%? Yeah. Um... I mean, we'll start at the beginning of the day. So trying to get at least 20 grams of breakfast. I know it's popular now because Huberman Huberman made it uh, trendy. 20 grams of breakfast? 20 grams of protein oh. when you wake up. Um, there's like the fasting question, um, which is another rabbit hole, um, which can work for a small, like some people at certain times. But most of the time, if you're an athlete, um, you don't want to start behind. You want to have consistent intake of protein and hydration throughout the day. But mm-hmm. what usually happens is we don't eat enough protein and we don't hydrate enough early in the day. And then we're kind of behind and trying to catch up and then usually under fueling and under hydrating. Um, Cause what you don't want to do, which is the common mistake is people like overload their evenings and nights with like eating and drinking water or whatever. And you want to try to balance it out <laughs> a little bit more. <laughs> It's a common thing, right? So we talk about strategies um, of like how to make it easier on yourself because mm-hmm. pretty most people have busy schedules today um, and these days. 
So making nutrition something that is not going to hold them back and not going to make them think and stress and beat themselves up every day um, mm-hmm. is really important. Um, so yeah, there's lots of like good protein breakfasts. I love your idea was a quiche, um, mm-hmm. nice and high and protein. I think you said eggs, egg whites, turkey, some sausage and some veggies. Mm-hmm. Um, another good one to have in the wheelhouse is like a smoothie so a smoothie that's like a little higher quality is going to have plenty of protein healthy fats um, and like even veggies you can throw in there because you're not going to taste them another one is like protein oatmeal I see a lot of like pro volleyball players on the protein oatmeal trend Uh, I think Jam and Allie were posting about it before last camp but (laughs) it the reason why is because oatmeal gives you nice steady energy especially if you're training in the morning um it's that's a great option there as well. So, okay. but you said- the other great thing, one more thing, is that you can prep like oatmeal for you know three days or five days, and then you just wake up and eat it, or like you wake up, blend, throw some stuff in a blender. It takes five minutes. Um, but like mm-hmm. you were saying, trying to find thirty minutes every morning to cook and do dishes is like just not going to happen. Yeah, it was crazy. I mean, I never used to notice this. Like, okay, I cook eggs, cook bacon, but now I'm kind of running several companies uh, and trying to start a, a couple. And then I, I just added, you know, an infant, a baby, and I've got the baby. I've got to get everything done. Workouts are coming like last on my priority list. Cause I want to make sure I feed my family first, but the morning making three, four eggs and like a couple pieces of bacon for me. And then, you know, maybe, maybe a little bit of toast or something, but between that prepping it, heating it, you know, cracking the eggs and then cleaning it afterwards, 40 minutes are gone. Yeah. Just do that routine. And, and you have to be there in a physical place when it's like, I'd like to eat and be on the move. And so we've started this process of on Sundays, you know, we cut a big bunch of vegetables. We put 12 eggs into this batter. If you guys want the actual recipe that we use, it's super easy. And I have breakfast for the entire week and it's just a 90 second microwave or, uh, or, or a little micro oven. I forget what you call it. Air fryer. And uh, yeah, 12 eggs, peppers, onions, some ground beef. And it's super simple. And it takes us about, you know, 45 minutes on a Sunday. And that saves me 40 minutes every day for the rest of the week. That's some damn good ROI right there. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> so you said 20 grams of protein. Let's yeah. demystify that right? An egg, just one egg can be, depending on the size, like five to eight grams of protein, right? So you're thinking three to four eggs, if that's all you have, or two eggs and I don't know, cheese, oatmeal protein, a small like little dabble of protein, uh, protein powder in your coffee, which is what Janelle does. Uh, But what else what else does 20 grams of protein look like if somebody's not a big eggs person? Yeah. So it's definitely worth it to take some time to actually like crunch the numbers on like your regular meals uh, mm. to get like a gauge. So yeah, eggs usually have about six per egg. So if you do three, that's 18. Um, but three eggs is, can be kind of a lot and it's a lot of healthy fats, but fats too. So it's pretty filling um, for the average person. Uh, they have a lot of great like chicken sausage and turkey sausage um, mm. as well. That's like pretty lean. If you get one with good ingredients, um, that goes well with eggs. Uh, Greek yogurt is awesome. Super high in protein. Um, you just yeah. got to be careful and get ones that don't have tons of added sugar. Um, so I believe one serving has like 15 grams. So if you just double it, you can get up to 30 easy. Um, and you can blend Greek yogurt into smoothies too, which is delicious. You can also blend it into oatmeal and it just makes it like super creamy. Um, lots we of actually good- give my daughter um, Greek yogurt. Uh, we like blend up a banana, we squish the banana and then we blend a little bit of like the sugar-free yogurt together. And she gets this like really sweet tasting fruit serving and, and bit of protein. So uh, that's our process for her. That's great. For breakfast? Okay, nice. I love yeah. it. And it's so creamy. It's like almost like ice cream. 
Oh, it's so good. Yeah. It's tasty. Um, obviously protein powders will work. Um, I like, you said you added egg whites to your eggs. Um, that's the easy way. Um, and lately I've been on a core power trick. Uh, what power? have you tried core power drinks? No. They're, they should sponsor me. I've been telling everybody I'm like obsessed. <laughs> um, they're pretty much, uh, like milk that's been filtered in a way to take out some of the carbs and fats, which is super high in protein. And the mm. chocolate one like tastes like chocolate milk and it's delicious. 26 nice. grams of protein. And then I'm about to try the one that's like 40 something grams. Um, and you can buy them in bulk. So those are great. Like first thing in the morning or before bed too, cause they're so high in protein. So lots of options there. Um, sometimes There's something else you said about like uh, hydrating where, you know, as the day goes on, you kind of get thirstier and thirstier. And then for me, like I have a lot of coffee in the morning and that creates a lot of thirst later because, you know, you feel like you're drinking, but you're not necessarily, it's just net neutral between um, an American coffee is essentially you're peeing out the amount of water that, uh, that you bring in because the caffeine just kind of forces it out. But I end up being pretty thirsty at night. And then what does it do? It ruins one of our pillars of athleticism. Where now I have to wake up two or three times to pee at night because I had so much water after 6 p.m., after 5 p.m. Yeah. And now I've ruined another component of my pillar instead of saying like, okay, let me make sure that I'm done drinking, that I will not be thirsty, you know, by what, I don't know, 6 p.m. And then, okay, I can have half a glass of water beyond that. Something, some type of method to say, let's hydrate early yes. versus later for sleep. Yeah. And thank you, by the way, for saying caffeine's neutral. There's a lot of misinformation that caffeine's dehydrating. Um, if you take like a caffeine pill, technically that's dehydrating, but it's neutral. So, mm. and yeah, that's a, uh, such a pain too. having to wake up to go to the bathroom. It's just like, ah, and you can't do anything about it. Mm. Uh, so I like to make uh, saying like, oh, I'm going to drink more water. Sure. That's helpful. But saying I'm going to drink two liters by lunchtime. Or I'm going to set like a huge glass of water by my bed at night. And first thing in the morning, I'm just going to like try to chug eight to 16 ounces. Wake up and chug. I'm I'm guilty of this too. I like go straight for the caffeine. Um, but trying to get at least a glass of water in um, just first thing. And normally if you, especially as athletes that play beach volleyball, um, if you wait till you're thirsty, it's too late. So as athletes, we want to, be hydrating constantly and again, not waiting. So just building habits in so you don't have to think about it. Um, keeping water on you is also important. Um, and you mentioned Florida has really hot tournaments. I've actually never cramped before, knock on wood. Um, oh, you're one of those. Oh. Yeah. So I can't put my flip flops on. <laughs> Toes just start going down. <laughs> I've seen it happen, obviously. And I thought it was like normal for people to like stick themselves with IVs for hydration. Like when I was growing up, because people just did it all the time in Florida. <laughs> Most of the time it was like a nurse or a firefighter that would like bring stuff. Um, <laughs> it's like, you and I just... grew up and I'm like, it's so not normal to just like, stick somebody with an IV. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully I'm not adding to the Florida stereotypes with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Florida does its its own job for that. So yeah. you're right. Uh, all right. So we are, we'll get to cramping in a little bit, but 20, 20 grams of protein for breakfast, just as a good baseline, which can be three eggs, or you can look at any nutrition label and say, all right, uh, 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 a serving and a half or, you know, those little plastic cups of Greek yogurt. That'll be good. Just look in, there's car carbohydrates and there's sugars. Anytime you see a double digit number, Next to the word sugars, there will always be grams. So if you just look at anything you have and you take a look right next to sugars, just know that there's stuff that's added to that, right? Those are usually added sugars, and that's very different than carbohydrates. So if you're looking at nutrition labels, that's the one column. That one in protein are the one columns that you guys can just really pay attention to and say, all right, if this says per serving, it's double digit in sugar. Slow down for your everyday intake. Do not take that. But we'll talk about how that might change during a intense practice or during a tournament. But back to breakfast like every day. Uh, 
20 grams of protein. That's easy. I can either take three or four eggs um, or look at any nutrition label and then do that math. Two eggs and 10 more grams of protein. Okay, cool. What else should an easy routine breakfast be? So it depends on the person. Like, do they want something warm, something cold? How much time do they have before they get out the door? Are they working from home? Um, one thing I like about nutrition is that it you can't separate it from the rest of the person of their life. So usually the recommendations kind of vary on what's going to work for them. Um, but ideally something that you can prep either the night before or um, a couple like multiple servings at once. Like the quiche that you do is great. Um, you can also do, um, people make oatmeal like bars for the week as well too. Hmm. Um, so sometimes I, you can vary breakfast. Like if you train in the mornings, you might need something that's a little bit higher in carbs, like oatmeal, um, or like a smoothie rather than if you train in the afternoons, you might be something better with something that's more like protein and fat, like a more egg based. Um, okay. quiche. so that's something to consider too. Does that now? Answer? question for so one question about eggs and then one question about american breakfast um <laughs> for eggs there was all of the science that the cholesterol in yolk was super dangerous for everybody and if you say you tell somebody oh you should have three or four eggs people who are not paying attention right now might say Oh, well, I was told that that much cholesterol is going to be terrible for your heart, terrible for your arteries. Right. But, uh, what can you say about egg yolks and increasing those, you know, as, as opposed to <clears throat> just having those egg whites? Yes. So you're absolutely right. Eggs had some bad press for a while. Um, as multiple foods do, they go through cycles of having good and bad press. Um and what we've learned is it's better to eat the whole egg because in the yolk is a lot of other like vitamins and minerals. Um, and it's really nutrient dense. The egg whites are just amino acids. Um, Which so is protein. Lots, lots of things like choline, um, fat soluble vitamins like A, D, E, and K um, are in the yolk. So the yolk's great. If you're worried about cholesterol, you need to be eating like more fiber in your diet, um, like fruits and veggies, things whole grains. Um, eggs are not like the biggest worry, I would say. It's it's the net positive is way greater than any kind of worries with that. Um, but a good tool is like they are higher in fat, um, which overall good fats, but um, adding some egg whites to kind of like make it more protein dense. Um, like if you're really worried about your cholesterol, maybe you have some like history of heart disease. Um, I'm not going to get too much into medical nutrition therapy, but you could do two normal eggs and then just like up the egg whites rather than like three or four. So you can make it work, but, um, good question. And just be aware of like demon, uh, people that are demonizing things that are whole foods. Um, yeah, so we okay. can, it's not that foods are good and bad. We can just use them in different ways. Grain of salt. Yeah. And then like we said in the beginning, kind of genetic expression, right? Some yeah. some person can literally die in minutes from ingesting a nut. Some person can use those nuts and trail mix to fuel them for an entire tournament and, you know, be on the higher level of performance, which is pretty crazy. So it it is, there's a lot of information out there. It's the, it's the industry's job to make sure that they're equipping people with this without confusing everybody. We don't want health to be confusing. We don't want nutrition to be confusing. Absolutely. Now, when and where would the typical pancakes, waffles um, in like a normal American breakfast and cereal, when are those good ideas? When are those bad ideas? Are they never? I mean, I haven't, I've had maybe two pancake or waffle breakfasts in the last three, four years. Um, but ironically, some of those have come during tournament days for me. So what do you have to say about pancakes and waffles? Good question. Um, we want to look for ones at, most of the time with more like protein. So Kodiak is like a good brand for that. They have higher protein uh, mm -hmm. pancakes and waffles because you don't want to typically 
you don't want to be eating a bunch of carbs by themselves. Uh, it's just unbalanced and it can kind of throw your blood sugar out of whack. So okay. in general, we always want to be balancing. If we're having a bunch of carbs, we want to add some protein. So maybe you don't have any Kodiak fancy protein pancakes. Uh, having some like chicken sausage or eggs with it to balance out the carbs is really important. Um, but also just an overall arching theme is that we like to have like dessert for breakfast in America. Um, and there's a movement <laughs> to try to make, uh, like more savory breakfast options popular, um, mm. which I think is great because there's something about like having something so, so sweet first thing in the morning that kind of sets you up for a weird day rather than something either more mild or savory. It sets you up for more hunger faster. Absolutely. Yeah. You get hungrier faster, the feeling of hungrier faster because your body just wants more sugar. And so if you're having pancakes or that waffle and syrup and butter, you get all that sweet taste. And then your body says, give me more, give me more, give me more. And then you've already, you know, kind of crushed through the satisfying feeling of that in your body. And so in another hour and a half, two hours, all of a sudden you're ready for more. And now this is one of those problems where people are like, well, I'm so I'm hungry so soon. So what am I supposed to do when I'm hungry? If you choose a different food group or you choose a different composition, then you won't be as hungry fast. And then that'll slow your net over weeks and months. And that's how we get lean again. Yes. And so typically, like if you're feeling hungry right after a meal, you need to have some more fiber. So like maybe it's like enriched white flour pancakes. So maybe we can try some whole grain pancakes or like some berries on top. Um, Berries are great in the morning because they don't have as high of like a glycemic index as other fruits, which just means they're not mean? gonna, yeah, it just means they're not going to like spike your blood sugar so high as much. It's more mild. Um, okay. Also, what berries, is, what's bad about spiking your blood sugar? Good question. Um, so it puts more stress and strain on your body when your blood sugar is like up and high and low and rather than as more steady. So ways to have it be more steady is more fiber, um, more protein and fat. So it's not that carbs and sugar and grains is bad for you. It's just that we normally eat them by themselves. Um, so trying to balance our meals out. And also, if you hear fiber, you don't need to buy Fiber One cereal or like a food product that says fiber on it. Um, fiber is just the structural material of food. So Typically, foods that are less processed, like whole grains, fruits and veggies in their natural state, are going to have more fiber. And most of the time, the majority of the population is way lacking in the fiber department because mm -hmm. we eat things that are processed or we can grab and go. Um, so if you're feeling uh, starving right after eating, more protein or fat and then some more fiber should help to balance that out and keep you full. Okay, nice. Um, all right. So extra fiber, extra protein and pancakes and waffles can be good if we just have, uh, a mix that is maybe a higher protein mix and one of those brands to look for if people love pancakes and love waffles, but they actually want to, um, increase their performance maybe is Kodiak. You said Kodiak's good. Um, and also the timing matters. So the context, like if you're about to go play a tournament, um, sure. Have some pancakes. Um, you're going to need that fuel. Um, when you hear carbs, you should think like just gas for your gas tank. As athletes, we wear race cars. Um, and so carbs are going to fill up that fuel tank. Um, we get into trouble when we are having tons of fuel and we don't need it. But if you're about to go play all day, that's a good morning to have pancakes. Um, but if you're about to maybe have an off day where you're just kind of sitting at work all day, pancakes probably it's just too much fuel right uh and then let's talk about during tournaments i mean number one why are people cramping are there supplements that can get me rid of it do pickles actually work uh and it, what are the biggest mistakes that people are making during tournaments that you see all the time for athletes or on tournament day and, and we already said focusing on eating well one day a week is not the answer. It's prepare for your tournament all week long, prepare for good health, prepare for a happy body all week long. Um, but there is 
differences. It's not just that you're only eating good. You should always be eating good or well. Um, but there might be differences that you should eat on tournament day that will boost your already above average diet. So what, what are the differences that you would say that would go for, for tournament day? Yes, absolutely. Um, everybody wants to play their best on tournament day. That's our time to shine. Um, so if you typically, we break it down into three like feeding windows. If you have at least three hours, you want to eat that full balanced meal with some fiber, some protein, fat, some grains and starches. Um, but most of the time, tournaments start at like 8 a.m. And I don't know a lot of people that wake up at 4 or 5 to eat a full breakfast. Sleep's important. So typically, that first balanced meal is going to start the night before your tournament. Um, and again, lots of grains and starches there. There's a reason why people carb load. Um, we want to think about stored carbs. Um, a fancy word for stored carbs is glycogen stores. So our body, like all throughout our muscles, literally has gas tanks that we want to fill up. Um, and research shows when those are full, we're going to perform our best. So um, pasta, rice, um, the night before the tournament is great. Um, having a full balanced meal. The second eating window is like if you have an hour or two. So this would be like breakfast before a tournament, or maybe if you have like a, a two hour break okay. um, in between matches or in between pool play or you're roughing or you're off, uh, you could do a mini meal. And then which I'll explain what that is. Third eating window is if you have less than an hour. So maybe you're in between matches, you're at tech or you're uh, like on your way and you're late. Like a technical timeout for uh, like AVP and uh, NCAA players. Yes. Or any, I mean, everybody gets technical timeouts, right? At 21? Uh, Maybe not. I don't, I don't think any local tournaments like officially go by that. Maybe in Florida okay. or like New Orleans or Texas where they're like, uh, we need techs because we're all going to die of dehydration here. But I'm always trying to take California, if you call a tech, it's like kind of, kind of weird. And especially oh, in a really? B or an A or a double A tournament, you're like, what? You want to just stop playing for five minutes? <laughs> I did not know that. Hmm. Um, is it like looked look down upon? Like, oh, you need a break? I mean, I would. Like, if I were in New Jersey and New York and somebody, like, wanted to stop playing at 10, 11 for five minutes, I'd be like, why? Can we just get on with this? You know? But if I needed it after experiencing and knowing that a technical is a thing, which I didn't know about until, like, maybe three years into actually playing, uh, then I'd be like, uh, yeah, we're getting our asses kicked. Let's let's take our tech. <laughs> or really exploit the technical timeout because your buddy's cramping or exhausted or something like that. Yeah. Okay, well, lesson learned. A tech is just when the score adds to 21. Um, and if you're not taking it, maybe on a side switch, you're grabbing a bite or something or a sip or something. Um, one thing that you always say at camps, Mark, that I like is like just to constantly be sipping and having snacks of things. Because mm -hmm. it's an intense week, those camps. It's a lot. And so people that come and they're like, I'm going to lose weight during camp and I'm going to eat salad and like not eat breakfast. And they usually don't make it past day two or three. <laughs> so um, learning the fueling strategies is really important. Um, so those are the three time windows um, that we can talk about. But another good like theme for tournament day is you don't want to do any new foods. So no new I don't know. Have you heard the Drake song? It's like no new friends. No, maybe but I, I can vibe with it because I'm not very good at making friends anymore. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no new friends. Um, that's what I say to my high schoolers. They're like, oh, you listen to Drake. So I get like street cred. But on tournament day, you don't want to have any new foods. You don't want to experiment. Maybe your partner's got like a new style of drink or food or sauce or spices um not the time to try thai food or curry the night before the tournament i see it all the time like i was in college for a long time and we would be traveling for tournaments and girls would order the craziest things off the menu and i'd just go like with whatever plain jane chicken entree they have um and then the next day they'd be at in the bathroom and i'd be playing volleyball <laughs> so uh, it happens more than you think. So uh, plain and simple, you don't want your food to be any kind of distraction um, on tournament day. So you just want it to be 
something that you're used to eating as well. So a lot of cool research has come out that uh, we digest things easier what we grew up eating. So if you grew up eating more pasta, your body's going to do better with that. If you grew up eating more rice, uh, your body does better with that. So if you've never eaten pasta before and you're like, oh, I'm going to go eat a bunch of pasta because the dietitian said to, and then you feel like so low in energy and just drained, um, that I've heard that happening too. So okay. um, it's always worth it to take time to figure out what you feel best on eating. And it's a pain because uh, you have, it takes time to like note how you felt after you eat and how, uh, what you ate and it takes work, but it's so worth it. Cause then, you know, the rest of your life, like this feels good. This doesn't feel good. And nobody can really do that work for you. Yeah, guys, if that is, that is some work, but it can be simplified. And if you get, if you head to betterbeach.com forward slash nutrition, uh, or just click the links around this video, we've got handouts, we've got little tests. I don't want to call them tests. I want to call them just like rating sheets for you. So it says, what did you eat today? And then rate your performance, rate your energy level. If you do that, if you do that for 14 days, I don't know, seven tournaments, um, 10 practices, you'll eventually see, ha, ha, ha. oh, I got a 10 for energy on that day. What did I eat beforehand? great. Let me see if I can get a nine or a 10 again uh, this next day. Of course, there's going to be different variables like sleep um, and what you drank and life stresses and all that. And like when you lifted, but if you can just start the process of the bulk of what I ate, not everything, you don't have to record everything and spend three hours studying like all of your things. Honestly, it would do a lot for you because if you do the hard work, once in your life and then you know how your body's reacting for the next however many years okay that three hours versus all the health and all the energy that you're going to get back in the future yeah probably work out for you uh but i know that we all have real lives and we're not really interested in investing a full like eight hours in one week to just our nutrition however what you should do is figure out what you eat just give yourself a zero to ten energy rating, zero to 10 performance rating, and just start looking for your higher numbers. And that will take you 90 seconds instead of diving into for a few hours, right? And then just look at the end of the week or the end of the month and say, okay, great. Uh, and you can do it per meal. You can do it for yesterday's food. You can do it for what you ate just before the match. Um, and you'll start getting some answers for yourself. And then we can help equip you better. But we've got those ratings and we've got those sheets for you at betterbeach.com forward slash nutrition. Check it out. Comes with a tournament eating nutrition checklist. Um, and we're adding Sarah Putt's full nutrition course to the library. So you'll have access to that as well in the complete player program. Um, but check it out. We're trying to make everything nutrition, hydration, supplements as easy as possible. And you can get started by clicking the link around this video. Check it out. Check it out. <laughs> I'm already a fan of what's on there. So yeah. it's good stuff. Yeah, it's there's a lot, it's a lot of detail. A lot people have trouble like finishing the courses because some of them are too lengthy because I added so much detail to a lot of them. So I'm actually trying to undetail okay. some of them. Be like, okay, now that here's the deeper learning course. Um, right. And that's what dad's recommending. He's like, we need like a 2.0 course. Like once everybody's gone through the first one why would they stay for a second and third year? And I'm like, well, because anytime you hear something, you might not be ready to hear that. It's like when you read a book and then you read it again three years later and then three years later, like different parts of that book make sense to you in a completely different way. Um, and it's also why we have repeat campers, right? Because every time they come, they hear it from a different coach or they hear something that they couldn't quite interpret the first time but at least that's the first time that they hear it. And pretty soon it starts making sense in a deeper way. And that's, that's how learning goes. But anyway, yeah. Um, our courses are, and programs are thick in there. So it's definitely for, for volleyball junkies who yeah. want to get better fast. So. I love it. That's what mm -hmm. I talk about with my clients a lot is like the, any kind of behavior change is so much like mental legwork at the beginning. And it takes time to um, 
it takes so much mental effort to change your habits, get out of your routine. And you're going from like a subconscious, just uh, cruising through your day to like having to think all the time. So it's like a lot of legwork in the beginning and then it gets so much easier. So an encouragement there, if you are going to start with any changes, um, yes, just be ready for that at the beginning. But the goal is if you're doing it right um, for things to get easier and you're changing your like default mode habits because um, we we fall back to our default mode. So same with like volleyball, your default training is like what you fall to at the end of the tournament day. Your default nutrition is just what you scrap together when you're having a crazy week right so we want our default mode to be getting better and better um as we <laughs> go through our nutrition journey and our athletic career so yeah okay <laughs> so for for heavy training days we definitely want like good proteiny breakfast but we want to make sure that carbohydrates are getting in as well um that's important for tournament days extra carbohydrates is going to be really important yes. and carbohydrates and even sugars you know this is this is now when we start talking about performance <laughs> um versus uh, versus what you need like our gummy bears our gatorade is that stuff good for you can i have sour patch kids well i'll tell you what if you don't have anything else yes like, would you like to have certain fruits during that time just because it's coming with extra nutrients and you get the same sugar kick for your championship match or for that technical where you're like a little bit tired or you're kind of feeling something? You need that sugar to spike you now for the next half hour, right? The problem with like kind of diabetes and blood sugar is when we continue to sugar, sugar, sugar throughout the day, our blood level, the 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 sugar level in our blood stays high. And then the reaction that we have to it basically becomes numbed over time. And that's when, um, that's when we get like systemic obesity and, and inflammation because our body isn't reacting to sugar the way it should. We've desensitized it by pushing it in at two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours. However, if we use it the right way sparingly and you use it for high performance, like when you need to be really active, when you need your brain to be on, to throw in some form of sugar, which ideally fruit. But if you don't have that, it, you go to the bodega, get yourself some Snickers and throw it in because this is your championship on the line, right? And you need that energy right then, right there, and you need it to spike. So if you don't have the access to the good food, which shame on you, you should have prepared, you know, you should have known you were going to the finals today. And had all the food ready for that. But if you don't have it, <laughs> find some little kids and steal their gummy bears. <laughs> I need a t-shirt that says that. <laughs> Stealing kids gummy bears. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Next, next better at beach logo. Uh, slogan. Gummy bears from like kids. Stealing candy from <laughs> um, but you're exactly right. Like uh, the closer you get to game time, the more you just want to focus on carbs and hydration pretty much. So I like, I think uh, I'm on your email list and you email, don't stop eating salads or something. Salads are bad for you. And I was like, Mark. <laughs> and then I opened it and I read it. And um, See? pretty good, uh, pretty good open rate on that one. I think like that. Me. Yeah. You got me. I thought we were going to have to have a talk. <laughs> I wonder um, if anybody just replied, probably Matt will tell us if anybody replied angrily without reading it. I wonder if anybody just like st is not ever going to eat a salad now. <laughs> They're like, Mark said it was okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, open the emails, guys. Like, read the, yeah. read the unsubject line. The, uh, but fiber and like super fatty foods, like fried foods. Um, and then salads are things that we want to stay away from. So they're just going to sit in our stomach, slow down digestion. During tournaments, right? On tournaments, yeah. Tournament okay. day. Yeah. Uh, which I see, like, sometimes there will be, like, a beach cafe at the tournament. And people are getting, like, fries and stuff. Not the best source of carbs, right? Um, but we can talk about carbs and sugar a little bit. Um, okay. So there's levels of like how nutrient dense some carbs are versus more processed carbs like gummy bears versus oatmeal right um it is so important to just get carbs in on game day 
and we want the simpler, the better as we get closer to game. So the difference would be like, if you have less than an hour, having applesauce rather than an apple, right? Because it's already, it technically has less fiber because it's already been processed. And all that does is like, if you think about it, you have to eat a food and then your body has to like literally break it down and get it into your blood. So there's a lot of complex things that have to happen. So the simpler the carb, the more you can just eat it, give it, you know, 20 minutes, whatever. And then you have that energy. Um, so if you think about it like that, um, we want those simple carbs. So pretzels is another good simple carb and also has some salt for electrolytes. Oh, uh, pretzels. Nice. But pretzels, simple, right? Applesauce, um, bananas are great too. They digest pretty quick. Um, and if, again, we want to choose the higher performance simple carbs, but if you have gummy worms and it's your last resort, uh, you're going to, that's, it's better than um, like a protein bar because it's just going to give you that quick energy. I've actually heard there's like an MLB team that gives their base runners a gummy worm when they get on the first base. That's great. Which I'm not saying to do, um, but that, that happens. So again, it's just all about context. Um, and if you have uh, like an hour or two, then you want that mini meal, which is uh, we're decreasing fat and fiber, but it's carbs with a little bit of protein. So like a banana and peanut butter or a slice of turkey um, with some crackers or pretzels or something. Um, and then hydration, you want to be really on top of your hydration as well, which we didn't get too far into yet. But um, yeah. those are like some good just takeaways um, for the cool. day. Yeah. What about um, just for the last uh, five minutes here? Let's cover some of the main supplements that you think are going to be best bang for the buck. If somebody wants to to use supplements, if we want to talk about you know what's popular now, which is uh, creatine, caffeine, the negatives and the positives to any things, and things that you think would be beneficial if people just added or took on tournament day or, or all week long. Yes. Um... My quick spiel about supplements is the supplement industry is like the wild, wild west. Okay. Uh, companies can put literally anything on their label and anything in the bottle and nobody's checking if they match or if it's true or if it's not true. Um, so it's important to get some that are third party tested um, and don't look at the pretty label and the pretty website that is very alluring. Okay. We want to be looking at the back supplement facts, but also if it's third-party tested. Um, there's a couple supplements that are worth your time and energy. So like creatine is one of the longest studied, most research-backed sports supplements there are. Helps you get more like oomph and like pop out of your muscles and for like high explosive energy movements. Creatine is not a steroid. Sometimes people think it's like steroid. Um, the it's thing in red meat. Is- like you get like in a serving of red meat, you get three to five. So if you had red meat every day, you would be on the supplement schedule um, that creatine creates for you anyway. Yeah. Like, so it's, it's crazy that people are like, oh my God, this crazy thing. It's like it, the, uh, people who are eating uh, you know, yeah. steak every day or steak and eggs, they're already on that program. Right. I think you have to eat like a pound a day or something like crazy to get enough creatine. So that's why it's like a worthy oh. supplement because- one okay. that's like tough on the budget, um, but uh, you'd have to eat quite a bit of it. Um, and the other good takeaway for supplements is you always want to look for a food first approach rather than um, just going right for a pill or powder form because a whole food is always going to be more bioavailable than something that can sit on a shelf. So just don't forget your common sense when you're going down the supplement aisle. Um, we like to think uh, like this magic bullet like, oh, we're going to take the supplement. It's going to solve all my problems. And this is going to be the thing that pushes me over the edge. But really, uh, the big rock theory, right? Are you eating enough protein every day? Are you sleeping? Are you hydrating? Um, supplements should supplement a balanced diet rather than be a substitute. Uh, but again, they can help us in the right time and context. So okay. creatine is one that's uh, worth the hype. Um, BCA is one that is not. Um, that's a waste of money there. Um, they were popular for a long time and I think people are kind of realizing now more. Um, caffeine is a proven ergogenic aid, which just means it's something that 
does increase performance. Um, but just uh, play around with it because you don't want to like get overhyped for a game and just be like your heart's racing. Um, but overall, caffeine's one that uh, is proven to obviously help keep us awake and like ready to go. And then just the general danger of like thinking that a Red Bull is is hydrating you or thinking that, a, you know, an iced coffee is hydrating you. The only problem, guys, is if you have that caffeine, we, we know that for, for most like uh, fluid containing caffeine is essentially a net neutral, which means that you pee out the amount of water that came with that caffeine. So since you're naturally dehydrating no matter what, if you only have that, within an hour or within a minute, essentially like <laughs> you would be net negative um, for your hydration. So the problem with drinking a protein drink or iced coffee or something like that is that you might be filling up your stomach and it might encourage you to not drink more water or enough water to then like really hydrate you. So you got to be careful with what you're doing. And maybe even like those smaller super caffeine things are like the caffeine gummies. Um, maybe that might be a better option for you because then you will have more space to actually hydrate yourself. But I guess then you would still need, you'd still need like two cans of water, two bottles of water um, to up that up. Either way, we got to drink a ton of, a ton of water. Right. That's a good point. Like it shouldn't be replacing your hydration. Um, and also caffeine is not energy. It's just the stimulant. So it's going to stimulate your nervous system, but we only get energy from carbs, protein, and fat. Um, yeah, so. caffeine just prevents you from feeling tired. It doesn't give you energy, right? It shuts off your receptors that tell you like nighttime is coming or you're eventually going to need sleep. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Good stuff though. Um, a couple other good supplements, uh, omega-3, like fish oil pills. Um, obviously from like a good third party brand can be useful because getting enough omega threes in our diet can be take some work and planning. Um, so examples of foods that are rich in omega threes would be like avocado, nuts and seeds, salmon and tuna. Um, eggs have some as well. So mm. that's one that can be worth supplementing if your avocados go brown fast. Um, and then also, I always like to talk about tart cherry juice, especially for volleyball players. Um, oh, yeah, you're a big tart cherry girl. I am. It reduces yeah. muscle soreness. And yeah. I was when I was at IMG Academy, they did a um, study with their baseball players. They were all wearing WHOOP at, uh, activity trackers. Mm -hmm. And they gave half of them tart cherry juice and then half of them not. And their recoveries, like, went through the roof. Um, so Whoa. they started doing it. Yeah, so it was cool. I mean... It's like you hear about studies that's like, oh, yeah, this works, but actually getting to see it is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And it's also a natural source of melatonin. So you could have a little mix it with some protein before bed and. Tart cherry, cherry juice. juice. Yeah. Any good, any good brands you could recommend? I, I'm, you know, just try I'll to recover. get. I'm not really working out anymore, but I'll, I'll try to recover <laughs> from desk sessions. <laughs> you recover your brain from all the yeah. work. Um, so a popular brand is Cherry Bundy, but it's just pretty expensive. So any like tart cherry juice you can find at the grocery store, that's 100% is worth your money for sure. Um, I will warn you, it's not sweet. It is very tart. So you have to mix it um, with something or just kind of muscle it down. But okay. yeah, in general, food first approach is uh, always the best for supplements. Um, yes. Cool. All right. So guys, uh, we're going to wrap this up here, but I want you to know that, uh, again, uh, in the complete player program, as well as now we have the complete coach program. So just in case, uh, we noticed that a lot of people on our website, were going to the coaches and club directors spot. And we now have a program specifically for you guys, coaches and club directors to help you learn how to coach, to help you become better leaders, to help you problem solve through, your parent and club running those problems. And of course, practice design and what a good practice looks like, where the coach should stand, how you should be feeding, how you not should be feeding. Uh, how much are you talking during the practice and just wasting your players and teams 
time. Uh, there's a lot of advice and tips in there. So we're starting the complete coach program and we have the complete player program. Uh, they're very similar, except we're just speaking from a different angle. And Sarah's masterclass is going to be in there for nutrition, supplements, hydration, specifically focused on how to fuel athletes and how to fuel your teams. So check that out by clicking on the link around this video. And if you join, if you're watching live, if you join before uh, March 18th, then you'll get to chat with uh, Sarah live in our program, along with having access to all of those courses and all those workout programs and nutrition programs. But going deeper from there, Sarah also takes on her own personal clients. So if you want that broad overview and you know the, the major points, come to that program. And then, of course, if you want to dive in and have one-on-one -on -one nutrition coaching, Sarah's about to give her a little ad here. Go ahead. Yes, absolutely. Um, if anybody's interested in coaching, uh, my Instagram is Sarah Putt Sports Nutrition. Um, and yeah, I love helping people get better and it's, it's great. <laughs> I'm so bad at promoting myself. Yeah. We'll work on the elevator speech, but yeah. That's not, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, and are you competing this year? Yes, sir. Getting ready for summer. I have a healthy PCL and I'm excited. Good. Gonna excited get out. for you. Um, Florida tour qualifiers, heritage, whatever the new AVP nicknames are. Yeah. Just, just all of it. All of it. Just living the volley life. Yeah. Sweet. I'm in, cool. I'm in Florida though, mainly. So hopefully any, any down in my area will be good, but looks like there's tournaments like really all over this year. So. Oh yeah. I mean, I'd like the, to me, the grassroots volleyball, like grassroots owns volleyball. Yeah, I think the AVB is trying to be like the best and highest version of it. And they started with the AVP America thing. Um, but the people who are organizing, directing tournaments, directing leagues and creating it for themselves, that's the group of people who run volleyball in this country, uh, run, especially like beach and grass, because you guys are the ones getting the most participants. So to those people who are running leagues, um, creating opportunities, running tournaments. I, I salute you because without you, we don't have people playing beach volleyball in the U.S. So keep going, keep crushing it. And uh, if you guys need any help, uh, we're, you can always reach out. Happy to. Uh, Absolutely. Yep. Happy, happy That's on the one of my favorite parts about the sport is the community, the local communities. You can't beat it. You can't. You have built-in friends. I mean, yeah. like a built-in community that's just ready to support you at the drop of a hat. Like anytime somebody needs help in the volleyball world, it's everybody drops everything and then just guns it to help them. It's such a cool, awesome sport and community to be a part of. Yeah. And it doesn't go away. Like I just moved home this past year and all the people I knew from high school are like, what's up? How's your mom? And it's like, this is so cool. You know, and my heart was just like full. Um, so it's fun. Awesome. And where is your hometown in case anybody's uh, looking at their local tournaments or just wants to work with you one-on-one? -on -one? Uh, Jupiter, Florida, or like West Palm. So, yeah. Nice. With all the golfers. All the golfers. Quick drive down to Deerfield if I want to get heckled. So that's, I love it down there. <laughs> <laughs> Good help grew in, in Deerfield for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. Sarah, thank you guys so much. Um, and thank you, sorry. Thank you guys for listening. Sarah, thank you so much for being a part of it. Uh, we're going to dive in a lot more with our players and uh, your masterclass in betterbeach.com. And uh, if you guys want to work one-on-one, -on -one, uh, you've got a stud right here. So reach out to her, Sarah, for Sarah Putt, Sports Nutrition. And that's it from us. Guys, If you, we have some events coming up. So I just want to make some quick announcements in case you are listening. Um, and today is Monday, March 11th. This podcast should be released in the next few days. So we're in the middle of March. We just finished our three-day camp, our three-day women's AAA camp in Hermosa. But we have April 6th to 12th, all levels, all ages. And for the people who are in our coaching program, free coaching clinic. And that is April 6th to April 12th in St. Pete Beach at the Postcard Inn. 
Uh, on April 7th and May 5th, we've got Beach Volleyball Fundamentals, six-hour clinics in Hermosa Beach. May 31st, this one's selling a lot of spots. Uh, people are joining from everywhere. This is in Long Island, New York. We're going to be in Long Beach, May 31st to June 2nd. If you've never been to Long Beach, New York, in my mind, in my heart, it is one of the best beach towns in America. And I know that that is a coming from somebody who's been to a lot of beach towns. This place is awesome. So social, tons of restaurants, beautiful sandy beach. So I'm, I'm hoping we get a lot more people to share in my hometown out there, which is going to be Long Beach, New York, May 31st to June 2nd. And uh, just head to betterbeach.com forward slash camps if you guys want to check out any more of those dates or send us an email to support at betterbeach.com if you want to organize your own camp or event with us. That's all from me, from Sarah, from Better at Beach. And uh, we'll see you guys on the sand. Thanks so much, Mark. Welcome. Bye-bye. <laughs>